For the second part, let's take a look at trigonometric integrals. The first integral, which is not as obvious as the ones that we saw before, is the integral of the tangent. So integral of tangent x dx is the logarithm of the secant, so ln of the absolute value of secant of x plus a constant. Why is this? Well, just look at it. So this is the integral of tangent x dx. You know that the tangent is sine of x divided by cosine of x dx. And then you do a substitution. You set u equal to cosine of x, which means that d of u is minus sine of x dx. You plug it in. So this is minus the integral of du divided by u, which is ln of u, so ln of the absolute value of u to be exact, plus a constant and with a minus sign. We transform it back, so we transform it to minus ln of the absolute value of cosine of x, plus a constant. Then we use basic formulas for logarithms, so we know that ln of x to the power a is a times ln x. So this is actually equal to ln of cosine x to the power minus 1 plus a constant. So 1 over cosine is a secant. So this is ln of secant of x plus a constant. In the same way, you can calculate the integral for a cotangent. So the integral of cotangent x dx is ln of the absolute value of sine of x plus a constant using the same reasoning as the first integral. Then we also have the integral of a secant. So the integral of secant of x dx. This is equal to the logarithm of absolute value secant x plus tangent x plus a constant. And the integral of the cosecant. So integral cosecant x dx. This is minus ln of cosecant x plus cotangent of x plus a constant. Let's calculate the first one. So the integral of secant of x dx. To do this, it's easiest to apply a trick by multiplying by 1. But we take secant of x plus tangent of x. So we multiply and we divide by this. And the reason we do this is to apply substitution. So set u is equal to secant of x plus the tangent of x. Then we can calculate the derivative, so d of u. This will be tangent of x divided by cosine of x plus 1 divided by cosine squared of x times dx, which is equal to tangent x times secant x plus secant squared of x dx. If we then look at the integral, we see that the numerator is secant squared plus tangent times secant. So this entire part is equal to d of u. And then in the denominator, we have secant plus tangent, so this is just u. So we get ln of absolute value of u plus a constant. And then we replace u. u was secant of x plus tangent of x plus a constant. The second formula follows the same strategy, but now with the secant. And we can also rewrite this a little bit, so we do the same thing. This is ln of cosecant of x plus cotangent of x to the power minus 1 plus a constant. So it's ln 1 over cosecant of x plus cotangent of x plus a constant. Cosecant is 1 divided by sine. Cotangent is cosine divided by sine. So this is ln of sine of x divided by 1 plus cosine of x plus your constant. We then multiply the numerator and the denominator with 1 minus cosine x. So this gives me ln of sine of x times 1 minus cosine of x. 
divide by 1 minus cosine squared, which is sine squared of x. Then I can divide out one of the sines, so this gives me ln of 1 minus cosine x divided by sine of x, plus a constant, or this is ln, 1 over sine of x, this is cos secant of x, minus the cotangent of x, plus a constant. For this kind of integrals, for the trigonometric integrals, it's less important to know the formulas by heart as to know how to reconstruct them. If you can calculate them, if you can reconstruct them, you will always know them. If you memorize them, you have a probability, you have a chance that you forget the exact formulation. So it's more important to understand them and to be able to reconstruct them than just to learn them by heart. And then there are also two formulas for squares. So the integral of cosine squared of x dx, this is equal to one half of x plus sine x cosine x plus a constant and the integral of sine squared of x dx, this is one half of x minus sine x cosine x plus a constant. The way to find these formulas is by using the trigonometric functions. So we have, or we know that cosine squared is one half of 1 plus cosine 2x. And sine squared, this is one half of 1 minus cosine 2x. Let's then calculate a number of trigonometric integrals. For the first one, let's calculate the integral of sine x to the power 3 times cosine x to the power 8. If you have an integral which is a combination of sine and cosine, you will try to write everything in one of both. So you know that sine, the derivative of sine x, is cosine x. The derivative of cosine x is minus sine of x. So the easiest thing to do is use a substitution. So either you choose u equal to cosine of x or u equal to sine of x in function of what works easiest in rewriting the original. In this case, we have an odd power for the sine of x. So here we have to the power 3. So we will be using sine of x as g prime of x. This means that we will rewrite this. So this is cosine to the power 8 of x sine squared of x times sine of x dx. So this basically will be my du. Therefore, u will be a function of x, and what we then have to do is rewrite this sine squared of x in function of cosine of x, and this is easy because this is just 1 minus cosine squared of x. So then we say set u equal to cosine of x, du is minus sine of x dx, and the integral becomes u to the power 8, 1 minus u squared times du, and then with a negative sign because of this minus sine x dx. So we get the integral of u to the power 10 minus u to the power 8 du. This is u to the power 11 over 11 minus u to the power 9 over 9 plus a constant. And then we transform it back. u was the cosine of x, so this is the cosine of x to the power 11 divided by 11 minus the cosine of x to the power 9 divided by 9 plus a constant. A very similar integral is the integral of cosine a of x to the power 5 dx. We said that we will use the odd power for the substitution. So here we have the cosine which is in the odd power, which means that here if we split it, this is cosine to the fourth times the cosine of a of x dx. Hence the substitution that we will be using is u equal to sine a of x and so du is a times cosine ax dx. This means that we have to express the cosine to the power of 4 in function of sine of a of x. 
This is easy. Cosine to the power 4 is cosine squared squared. So cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared a of x to the power 2 cosine a of x dx. And then we can use a substitution. This is 1 minus u squared to the power 2 times du divided by a. So it is 1 over a, the integral of 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the power 4 du, which gives me 1 over a u minus 2u to the power 3 over 3, u to the power 5 divided by 5 plus a constant. We then replace u, so it's 1 over a times sine a of x minus 2 third sine a of x to the power 3 plus 1 fifth sine a of x to the power 5 plus a constant. As a third example, calculate the integral of sine of x to the power 4 dx. In this case, we do not have any odd powers, we have only even powers. So we have to use another way to calculate this integral. What we will be using are either the integrals for sine squared or cosine squared, or a similar integral solution using the double angle formulas. What we have in this integral is the integral of sine squared of x to the power 2 dx. And then for sine squared, we will use the double angle formula. The integral thus becomes here 1 minus cosine 2x divided by 2 squared dx, which is the integral, one fourth of the integral of 1 minus 2 cosine 2x plus cosine squared of 2x dx. Using then a substitution, u is equal to 2x, so we will not work out with the substitution, but we will do it immediately on site. But this is the substitution that you use. This then becomes x over 4 for the first part, minus sine 2x divided by 4, plus 1 over 4 times the integral of cosine squared 2x dx. So for the last one, we have the integral of cosine squared, but we have a 2x here. So what we need behind my d, so this should also be 2x. This also means that I have to divide again by 2x. So this is basically doing the substitution u is equal to 2x without explicitly renaming the variable into u. So we have x divided by 4 minus sine of 2x divided by 4 plus 1 over 8 times the formula for cosine squared, so the integral of cosine squared we calculated before. This is one half of our variable now is 2x plus cosine 2x times sine 2x. This you could replace as one half of sine of 4x using the formula that sine of 2x is 2 times sine of x cosine of x, so sine of 4x is 2 times cosine of 2x times sine of 2x. So this is 1 half sine of 4x. And then we still have to add the constant at the end of the formula. So we get x divided by 4 minus sine 2x divided by 4 plus 1 over 8 times x plus 1 over 32 times the sine of 4x plus a constant. And then we can take both x terms together. So we get then 3x divided by 8 minus sine of 2x divided by 4 plus sine of 4x divided by 32 plus a constant as a final answer. For the integral of tangent squared of x, we can do the following. So we know that tangent squared is secant squared of x minus 1. The integral of secant squared is the tangent of x, so this is tangent of x, minus the integral of 1, which is x, plus a constant. The fifth example, let's calculate the integral of secant to the power of 4 of x. 
What we will be using here is again the formula that secant squared is 1 plus tangent squared of x. But we will play it a little smarter than that and we will not substitute secant to the power of 4, but only secant to the power of 2. So this is 1 plus tangent squared of x times secant squared of x dx. Why would we play it this way? Because now we can do a substitution u equal to tangent of x and then we know that the differential d of u is secant squared of x dx. So the integral becomes the integral of 1 plus u squared du which is very easy to calculate. This is u plus u to the power 3 over 3 plus a constant and then we replace u with a tangent so it's tangent of x plus tangent of x to the power 3 divided by 3 plus a constant. And then for the final example calculate the integral of secant of x to the power 3 times tangent of x to the power 3 dx. In this case we have to relate tangents and secants with each other which is easily doable through the formula secant squared is 1 plus tangent squared. But then we also know or we need to know which substitution to use. And so the easiest substitution would be u is secant of x and du is then the secant of x times the tangent of x dx. If we just split off one secant and one tangent we are left with secant squared of x times tangent squared of x, secant of x, tangent of x dx, where this final part will be used in the substitution. And so we substitute for a secant, so we have to replace tangent squared. So it is the secant squared of x times secant squared of x minus 1, secant of x, tangent of x dx. Then we perform the substitution, so this is u squared, u squared minus 1 du, very easy integral, gives me u to the power 5 over 5 minus u to the power 3 over 3 plus a constant. And then u is secant of x, so it is the secant of x to the power 5 divided by 5 minus the secant of x to the power 3 divided by 3 plus a constant.